Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. I'm going to be honest, I didn't really think this episode was, like, good. I thought it had some good moments in it, but as a whole, I didn't really think it was too great. Um, you know, let's talk, let's start with the whole sex tape thing. You know, with um, Cam and um, Jocelyn. Now, this is one of those things where it's like, it sucks. Double standards suck. Because Jocelyn is freaking out. Um, you know, when she tells Carly and everything like that, you know, she's freaking out. You know, like, she's like, how am I going to be able to go back to school, see my friends? Um, you know, she had to turn off her phone because she kept, you know, her phone kept blowing up. And I'm pretty sure from what um, Cam was meant to say that, you know, they are... Like, either slut-shaming her or just being really rude. Um, meanwhile, you know, even Cam acknowledges that, you know, it's a lot worse for, you know, worse for her because, you know, he's getting congrats and high fives and stuff like that. And, um, you know, he's more worried about how she's doing. Even in the beginning when um, Jake got the um, message... He had to sit there and try to, like, you know, take the phone from him and delete it. And Jake was like, bro, you, you do realize I could just sit there and just download it again, right? Like, that's not, that's not doing anything. And I'm not going to lie, the look on Liz's face when Cam was like, because he came downstairs and he wasn't really hungry and stuff like that. And you just tell that his mood was kind of off. And, you know, after Jake goes upstairs to get dressed because, you know, he's going to be doing therapy. Because Liz says so, even though Jake is like, I don't really want to do that. He's upset, you know. He feels that Liz is blaming him for the stuff that's been going on, even after he said he didn't do it. And, you know, Liz also makes it known that she's not going to be seeing Finn, you know, for a little bit. Because, you know, she wants to make sure that they know that, you know, they're the number one priority. But yeah, the look on her face when, you know, Cam told her about the uh, the sex tape, like, maybe it's just the way that the actress' face is built and, like, her eyebrows and everything like that, but she just had that look when it was just, you knew it said WTF just written all over her face, all over her eyebrows. It was priceless. Um... Now, again, going back to Carly and Jocelyn, you know, there's one point where they're talking about Trina, you know, because Carly is like, you know, who do you think done it? And, you know, Carly points to Esme, but Jocelyn's like, you know, she left the cabin before that whole thing happened. And she brings up Trina and she's like, well, you know, Trina was really drunk. And, you know, she kept talking about how she was feeling like she was left out. And I'm like, Jocelyn, you do realize this is the second time and I get it, her head is spinning, and she's worried, and all these different emotions, but this is the second time where I felt like she was really starting to consider that um, Trina, you know, might be the one that leaked it. And hell, even Carly's like, that doesn't seem like Trina, you know, that doesn't seem like something Trina would do. And he both, again, is like, yeah, you know, you're, you're right, you know, it's like Trina wouldn't have, you know, done that or whatever. So Carly gives her some sage advice or whatever about just, how to go about this whole thing. Um, and they run into Esme. They run into Esme. And, um, you know, Esme does her whole fake, oh, uh, you're so brave, this, that, and the third. And Carly, you know, as she's about to leave, Carly's like, yo, sit your ass down. And you can tell she's about to sit there and put Esme on notice. Um, now, the scenes between Esme, Nicholas, and Ava was actually pretty interesting. Because, you know, from Ryan, Ryan told Esme to sit there and be like, yo, make yourself more likable. Or make them hate you a little bit less. Um, and, you know, she sat down at first and they both wished that they'd given her the cold shoulder. But after Ava left, you know... Esme started, I felt like Esme really started to manipulate it. Nicholas talking about, oh, I'll help you out with your whole Spencer thing. Like, at first, you know, she was like, oh, you know, Spencer will talk about you a lot. And, you know, he held you in such high regard. And, 
um, this, that, and third. And hell, she was even like, you know, listen, if you talk to, you know, before you get a chance to talk to Spencer, you know, I can kind of warm him up, you know, and to, you know, inviting him to the, you know, ceremony or whatever. And it seemed like it was working. Um, he seemed like he kind of dropped his guard. And, um, yeah, but there's one point in the beginning, Esme is clutching her hands, like clutching, you know, really tight. And when they start talking about Ryan, because, you know, um, Ava gets a call and you talk about Ryan and stuff like that. And I guess the way it was that they're talking about her, Esme really didn't like. And she starts tensing up and once again, she starts bawling her fists. And, you know, Ava's like, oh, you, you get it? And, um, you know, Esme lies about it. And I, I can't remember what she said, but she lied about it to cover it up. So I guess her little plan is working. But I'm, I'm going to be honest. If her whole, you know, relationship with Spencer is fake, then why is she going so hard as far as, um, you know, trying to get rid of Trina, doing all these things? To draw attention to herself. Um, the, the, the game and everything like that. Like, you're supposed to be kind of engracing yourself into, you know, Spencer and their lives. And you're going about it in a way where it's like, they don't want you near them. But then again, Esme is a sociopath, so you really can't predict crazy. Now, I'm not going to lie, um, half, of this, half of the rest of this stuff kind of plays out like a high school drama. You know, Fenderson, they're talking about how you can't see Liz anymore because of the whole Jake thing, and, you know, Liz wanted to prioritize the boys or whatever. But then after that, you got, you know, Chase talking about Brooklyn with Fen, and, um... After Willow goes to class, Michael's not there talking to Brooklyn about Chase. And both of them, more or less, are kind of, you know, trying to steer the other party towards each other. Um, you know, Chase is kind of taking more of the generous approach and not really kind of crowding her. Even though Finn is like, yo, you need to kind of make yourself known, like, put yourself out there pretty much. Um, and, you know, Michael's like... Because, you know, Brooklyn is like, I just want to be friends. I don't want to sit there and kind of mess things up. Um, and, you know, Michael, this is after you talk about Bailey and the lost, you know, um, how Brooklyn is feeling and, you know, how much he's covering up her true feelings about the loss of, you know, not having Bailey in her life anymore. So after they do that, you know, Michael's like, he talks about um, Chase and, you know, Michael's literally is like, Instead of thinking about everything that you can lose with Chase, think about how much you can gain with him. And there's one point where they start doing this, this um, montage of Brooklyn and Chase, and I'm just like... <sighs> what sucks is that when Brooklyn got to town, she didn't even sit there and text Chase. You know, just sit there and say, hey, I'm back in town or whatever, like... What was going to wind up happening? You're just going to just... Eventually, was going to run into him. Like, what are you doing? Honestly, to tell you the truth, Chase did wind up meeting up with her, and I was a little kind of pissed. After everything that we've been through, um, the lies and everything like that, and just kind of just being good co-parents towards, like, barely, you didn't even actually have to audacity sit there and tell me that you were back in town? Like, what are you doing? Oh, and I forgot to say, um, what was his name? Jake did agree to go to therapy. I mean, at first he was kind of, like, pissed off about it, and, you know, he kept it to thinking, like, his mother practically calling him, like, you know, crazy, a psycho, or whatever. But, more or less, he begrudgingly did want him going. I feel like that's about it. I do. I feel like that's about it for the most part. Like I said, this wasn't really a great episode. Had some nice moments, but, you know. Um, now, the previews towards Monday's episode 
I'm looking forward to hers because they got Mrs. Wu back and uh, she has been greatly missed. Um, I don't know. It's just something about that woman. Like whenever she walked into a room, it's like, you know that she needs business. So um, it's definitely going to be interesting. She's at Curtis Club. So I wonder what that's about. Um, anyway, with that being said, I think that's about it. This is actually the second time that I want to record this because I didn't like how the first one came out. And I couldn't tell, was it, like, me, like, the video, or was it just the episode? So, I was like, no, I gotta do it again. So, yes, with that being said, I'm gonna go. Thank you for watching. Be safe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next video.